Hey, welcome to another episode of the Tone Print Tutorial Series. Today we're talking about the Subon Up. It should be a relatively short episode because the Subon Up uh, draws from some of the same pages that we've seen in other episodes. But without further ado, let's get on it. So, your first page, which is the one that I have on screen, it's the router page. I've seen it before, it only has one knob, it's the effects level. So, either on or off or everything in between, up to you. Second tab, Octaver. This is where some of the magic starts to happen. Uh, you will see four different levels. So level for our dry signal. I have my guitar, I shall demonstrate. Without the effect on, I've got my plethora, don't have a camera on it as usual, but you can hear this. You're also going to hear my guitar through the microphone. Um, but here we go. This is my dry signal without the effect on. So I'm going to turn the effect on now. And the only thing you can hear is through the microphone because all of the levels are down. I'm going to start with a level on the right, which is the level of my dry signal. So if I bring it all up, it's very similar to the signal that I had with the effect bypassed because it is in effect the dry signal. It's only the guitar that goes through. I'm, bring that, I'm gonna bring that one down now and Let's start with level up. Up represents the octave above the original signal. And there we go, it is a higher octave. Um, sub is the one octave immediately below the signal. Okay, and then we still have the sub 2, which is two octaves below the main signal. Which is very, very deep. On the bottom row we have three drive settings. These are distortion, gain, overdrive settings for each one of the up, sub and sub two uh, octaves. Obviously we don't have a drive knob for the drive signal because the drive signal is supposed to go straight through unaffected, so we only have drive for the up, sub and sub two. So I'm going to demonstrate by bringing up both the level of the dry and the up. And you can hear the mixture of the two of them. I'm now going to start driving up and I can drive um, quite hard here because it's level compensated. So as you drive the gain up the, or as you bring the drive up, the level of the octave is brought down so that it doesn't blow your speakers out. But you can start hearing that it's getting raspier. So let's cut it out. So as you can hear, it's very distorted. I'm going to bring the sub octave to lower a bit of that one, and the drive. And, just for kicks, let's try the sub octave 2, let's get rid of the normal sub. Seven string guitar, I can go low. So, that's the octaver page, so levels and drive settings for the octaves. Word of caution here. I've seen some people complain that when they plug in a sub and up, either on the plethora or the standalone pedal, they will um, notice that their sound gets overloaded very quickly. Or if they're using a drive in front of it, it gets blocking distortion. Pay attention to this level of the sub 2 octave. Obviously, the level of the sub octave is already important, but the, the sub two is very important because lower frequency um, sounds carry a lot more energy than higher frequencies. These two, so the sub two, especially the sub two, can very quickly overload everything that comes in front of it. So if you're driving an amp with it that you're trying to keep clean, this can easily drive it into distortion and into blocking distortion. So it will just make your sound go. <coughs> So, if you are finding some difficulties with the sub and up, check that you don't have the sub 2 octave too high. 
So, okay, let's move on. I'm going to leave this one. I'm going to kill level up and leave my dry at zero. The next page, the input EQ page. This does not affect the dry signal. Your dry signal is always going to pass through unaffected. What it does do, it allows you to tweak the input signal before it gets to the filtering stage of the octaver. So basically the signal path inside this pedal is your dry signal goes here, that it's derived to a bit that's going to do the octave part. This is, you can consider it to be a filter that's before then. So you have a few options. We've seen these options before on the flashback delay. Very much the same options that we had on the feedback path of the of the delay. And they are, so bypass, so nothing, low cut and high cut, low shelf, high shelf, and a parametric EQ. What you can do with these is basically filter out some frequencies or frequency ranges that you don't want to be affected by the octaver. Let me see if I can demonstrate this. So I'm going to throw a low cut on my signal, which means that everything below my input frequency is going to be cut from the signal. The EQ order uh, is the order of the filter that's being used. Number one, it's a 6 dB per octave filter. Number two, it's a 12 dB per octave. I'm gonna keep it on 12 dB so that you can actually hear the difference. And I'm going to start relatively aggressively Remember, I've got my sub octave and my dry signal full all the way up. So you, at this point, you should be hearing my dry sound and the sub octave. But you're not. You're only hearing my dry sound because I'm filtering everything below 20,000 Hz from reaching the, um, the octaver. So let's see what happens as I start coming down. You can hear faint sub-octave showing up because there are some frequencies here. Obviously, remember, this is a 12 dB per octave. It's not a brick wall drop. So it's a 12 dB per octave starting at 2K. So it slopes off relatively gently. And it's going to start allowing some of the frequencies below those 2K to go into the filter. So if I do a really low frequency, you barely hear the octave. But if I come to the higher register on the guitar, you can clearly hear the octave signal. I'm going to bypass the effect so you can hear the difference. So low notes with effect. You can't hear the difference. Now I'm going to bypass it again on the higher register. Nothing there. And with the effect, there it is. So this is what you can do with the input filter, uh, input EQ. Obviously you have two of these, so you have low cut and high cut, you have low shelf and high shelf, which basically allow you to do roughly the same thing, but instead of just being a constant slope filter, you can now do a shelf that allows you to either go up or down uh, in gain, and you can pick the slope of the shelf, so 3, 6, 9 or 12 dB, and you have two of these, so you can tailor what gets into the octaver. The next three pages are similar to the one that we've just seen before, so the input EQ, but the difference is now these are after the octaver in each one of the channels. So you have the sub-2 output EQ, sub-output and the up-output. And they all can be linked on the first page, so on the sub-2 output EQ. So whatever you do here will be repeated on these. You see that these are now greyed out because all of the controls are here on the sub-2 output EQ. If you unlink them, obviously you can tweak each one of them differently. And once again, we have the exact same option. So low cut and high cut filters, low shelf and high shelf and parametric EQ. And this time what you're going to do with them, uh, let me just check that my input EQ is in bypass. Yeah, so I should have, I have all of the signal that I wanted. So my dry and my sub octave one. So let's see what happens if I low cut something. Starting at 250 at a second order filter. And I'm going to clip this at 1K. So the difference for the input EQ is that now the octave is there, it just sounds thinner, right? And I'm going to do the same on the other side. So I'm going to throw in a high cut, second order, and I'm going to do the same here. So in effect, what I'm doing is a bandpass filter. 
centered between 1 and 125, so I should be cutting everything below 1k at 12 dB per octave, everything above 125 uh, at 12 dB per octave. <laughs> So you can hear it there, it's there, it's just a very narrow band of frequencies that's just barely there. I'm going to open it now a bit, starting at 450. So you can hear it, it's there, it's out of the way, but it's there. Uh, for comparison, I'm gonna bypass everything. So this is very overwhelming and you can clearly hear it there, so activate it again, low cut, high cut. This is great because it allows you to tame that shrillness of the up frequency of the up octave. So let's try again without the filter. See? Shrill. High cut there but tamed. That's what you can do with the output EQs and obviously you can if you want just tweak all three of them I'm not going to go through them because this is something that you really have to experiment for yourself as with everything in the tone print editor series you have to experiment it's not a spectator sport I can tell you what to look for but you have to be the one doing the searching so that's the EQ pages and then we have the modulation page which is the same as it's always been, the same that we found on one of the first episodes in the Tone Print series, link somewhere there, I think. Um, this modulation will work on all of your signals, so your dry signal and all of your octaves. You can't do, like the EQ, you can't select which ones to affect. This is going to affect all of them. And I'm going to show you a funny one. If the only signal that you keep up is your dry signal, you can have a modulation pedal. Yeah, I left this one out in the beginning, didn't I? So, yeah. In this case, I have a tri-chorus pedal built on a sub and up. But of course, you didn't buy the sub and up just for the chorus. You bought it for all of this. So this is how you can get it. So there are some very fun Hammond organs sounds to be had here. Oh, look, polyphonic organ generator. I wonder what this is. Um, but yeah, if you want to know how to work this page, please go check the respective episode of the Tone Print Editor series. It takes a bit of time to go through them, um, but it's linked um, somewhere in the description or back there. And. The other pages, again, we've been through these in the first um, in the first episodes for the expression pedal and the mash switch. You know how to do the knob mappings on this side. Go through the presets here. One last thing, there are two algorithms that are different that you can't select on your own. You have to select them by starting in the correct tone print. It's like the flashback delays and the Hall of Fame reverbs, you have to select the correct algorithm through the tone prints, and in this case they are the classic one that I'm going to select here, and with the classic it's glitchy, I'm going to kill the sub 2 octave again, this is glitchy, super fast tracking, don't try to do chords with it. It's glitchy. It's supposed to be glitchy. Unless you're doing octaves and then it's fine. Fifths. Yeah, it can do fifths. Don't try doing nines. Yeah, it breaks. So, classic. Good for single lines, good for octaves, eventually fifths if you're not pushing it too far. And the other algorithm is the poly, which is the default, which will allow you to track complex chords. So... Much better than the other ones. Still slightly glitchy because it is an octave pedal and it will always glitch slightly, but it's not as buggy, <laughs> deliciously buggy in the good way as the classic algorithm. 
this is basically what you can do with the sub and up. Pick your octaves, pick your levels, give it some drive if you want to get that sound a bit dirty. Um, there is a lot that you can do with this, uh, but again, give it a try, experiment for yourself. Thank you for watching. If you need links to the rest of the stuff, you can find them on YouTube on Pedal Platform. I'm at over a thousand subscribers. This is amazing. So thank you very much. If you found this useful, you can also pop over to my coffee page and buy me a coffee. Thank you to all of them who did already. Uh, your support means the world to me. It allows me to keep the lights on in the channel and bring more videos to you. Also, go follow me on Twitter. The um, handle is at Pedal Platform because it's where I usually post uh, the quizzes and polls about what video to do next in the series. So if you want to have a say on the next one, go follow me on Twitter, say hi, and um, yeah, and that's it about the 7-Up. I'll see you on the next video.